Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So, uh, let us look at uh, a generalized flow in uh, quasi 1D, uh, which consists of a combination of various uh, parameters like variations in area, variation uh, there may be friction, there can be heat transfer. There is also an additional uh, factor which we had not accounted uh, till now is if there is an injection of mass, if mass is getting added also uh, this which is typical in cases of say propulsion systems where there is some fuel getting injected into the flow uh, then there is a mass addition also happening so we'll uh, look at these cases until now the analysis we were doing used quasi 1d assumption which is that flow properties remain uniform across cross sections and we looked at different uh, drivers like either only uh, area was changing or there was only friction and no other effects were there it was a constant area duct similarly only heat addition or heat removal but in real uh, life problems and applications there is always combination of these effects so how do we analyze such uh, flows before we go there uh, we will just look at quickly look at what happens when there is mass addition uh, without going uh, much into details um, uh, because now this process of doing a quasi 1D analysis with a control volume uh, must have become quite familiar and uh, this can be now uh, you can do this uh, continuously. So, now if you uh, look at this what is this simple control volume that is taken uh, you have a constant area duct and um, at some uh, place the mass is getting added certain dm dot is getting added so across this control volume there is a increase in mass so m dot is not a constant anymore so uh, not a constant there is a variation of uh, m dot and uh, you can get the differential equation from uh, the, this quantity this is dm dot by m dot x. rho a v is uh, the mass flow rate through a particular cross section uh, that is m dot. So, dm dot by m dot can happen due to changes in density change in area uh, and change in velocity. So, uh, there can be though many if you consider a constant area duct then uh, dA by dA is 0. So, d rho by rho plus dV by d V. So, a changes in mass flow rate will get uh, affected in terms of change in velocity and the density and um, if you consider the energy equation here we are considering that this particular mass that is getting added uh, is having the same uh, stagnation enthalpy as the main flow. So, both of them have same stagnation enthalpy therefore, uh, there is no change in stagnation enthalpy um, when additional mass is getting added uh, that is the assumption being done here. In general uh, this can be different we will soon see that one also. So, uh, h plus v square by 2 is a uh, constant. So, you can write uh, now in terms of uh, derivatives. Now, if you look at the momentum equation you should be careful here because in general this mass uh, that is getting added can have a velocity which can be in any uh, general direction need not be along the same axis. So, it need not be along the same axis. So, we are looking at only 1D flow. So, we are looking only along x axis therefore, uh, we should take the component of velocity uh, in the x axis uh, the which is u here uh, to look at momentum equation x momentum equation. 
uh, solve that. So, P A minus P plus D P A this is the pressure force um, is equal to change in uh, uh, momentum flux which is m dot plus d m dot v plus d v uh, minus m dot v minus d m dot u. Now, this uh, u by v uh, the component of uh, the force in uh, the direction in x direction for uh, the injected flow u by v that is given the term uh, theta it is a parameter in this problem. Okay. So, now you can divide the entire equation by m dot and uh, this equation can be got from here. Now, as we did in all other cases our intention is to represent um, the, bomb, the main governing equation here it is a momentum equation you express momentum equation solely in terms of Mach number. Uh, this can be done by series of uh, 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 series of uh, algebraic manipulations of uh, the different equations which is how pressure is related to uh, uh, the equation of state p is equal to rho r t okay, and uh, uh, d rho by rho plus d t by t. Okay. Uh, then you have um, Mach number is v by a how is uh, that related then you have p naught by p this relation from here you can get uh, the relationship between uh, p naught and p and uh, similarly the impulse function and also you consider uh, the dt naught okay so you can plug all of them and uh, then uh, look at integrating this with dm dot by m dot as the uh, driving parameter and uh, similar to all other cases you can also have the star point which is uh, the reference point and you can get close form solutions um, for uh, mass addition also. So, let us uh, directly go and look at how mass flow uh, mass addition uh, affects various uh, parameters when it is uh, when the flow is subsonic similar to all other cases when flow is subsonic Mach number increases, uh, velocity increases, uh, pressure temperature density decreases and um, uh, entropy always increases. So, mass addition entropy increases there is, uh, but in supersonic flow it goes the other way around which is Mach number decreases, pressure temperature density they increase. Mm, and velocity decreases again entropy will increase. So, uh, that is uh, a quick introduction that we did not consider uh, mass addition, but mass addition is also uh, can be a possibility in um, specific applications. So, just before we go to uh, the generalized case where we consider all possible uh, variations of the driving uh, forces or driving drivers of these equations. Uh, this was a quick introduction to mass addition. Uh, the general analysis uh, tools are similar to what we had done for uh, the uh, previous cases. So, now let us look at uh, the generalized steady 1D flow, uh, where you can have uh, all kinds of effects that is happening. One is uh, that it is a varying area duct, so area change is happening. Uh, then we are considering that there is wall friction, so there is a frictional force along the walls, so uh, friction is considered. There is heat that is getting added or removed, so heat transfer is there. External work can be done or uh, done by the system or on the system. There can be mass addition. Uh, with different uh, um, uh, sort of temperature stagnation temperatures and pressures for the mass being added. You can have body forces and also in some cases you can have some entrained particles which induce some drag. So, another uh, drag force is also present and um, there can be effects like um, uh, there can be chemical reactions which can change properties of the fluid that can also be considered. 
for uh, the case that we are discussing here we will still consider calorically perfect gas if uh, chemical reactions are happening that uh, assumption is not uh, completely right uh, but uh, for the sake of uh, a analysis in this class we will just consider the uh, calorically perfect gas so what do we do now we write the conservation equations now considering all effects so now you have m dot is rho a v uh, and therefore area is also changing so you have dm dot by m dot is d rho by rho plus d a by a plus d v by v now a momentum equation you can consider uh, you have all the various parameters d p rho v d v is the momentum flux and then the body force term rho g d z uh, then the frictional force term rho v square by 2 4 f d x by d uh, how we reach that each individual part of these uh, terms we have already discussed in uh, those corresponding sections how we got this was dealt with in fano flow uh, similarly this is uh, delta d by a reference so force by area so that it is consistent in uh, dimensions where d is a drag force and this particular quantity rho v square multiplied by 1 minus y dm by m dot where y is the same as theta which is u by v we have just now discussed in this particular uh, section. So, this is due to mass addition. Similarly, if you like to take a look at the uh, energy equation again you come to uh, work done, uh, heat added or removed uh, and then here is the change in total uh, enthalpy of the uh, is a difference between what is outgoing and what is incoming. Okay. So, outgoing is the given here h plus d h v square by 2 plus d v square by 2 plus g z plus d z while incoming is 1 is due to the uh, 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 core mass flow the other one is due to an injection d m dot and here it can have different uh, uh, in, in uh, total enthalpy which is for the injectant. Okay. So, that is possible now in this energy equation you can uh, combine different differentials together and here is uh, the change in h naught it is d h naught um, this entire term d h naught while this is due to uh, heat uh, due to the mass addition term which is also a change in h naught for the mass addition d h naught i ok. So, d h naught i. So, finally, this is the term here which comes out which is uh, nothing but the statement that uh, work done and heat added or removed uh, will be changing the total enthalpy of the uh, system. So, here the parameters are um, the driving uh, parameter here is a combination in the energy equation it is a combination of uh, heat that is added. Uh, work that is taken out shaft work and also the uh, work or uh, uh, the total uh, difference between total enthalpies of the injectant fluid and um, that of the main fluid. And uh, if you divide that entire equation by ECPT, so this is a uh, driving force or driver of the equations and uh, that is related to change in stagnation temperature. Similarly, we can uh, uh, write down for momentum equation you can write down in terms of d p by p, d m by m, d t by t and uh, so on. Uh, here you have of course, this part is d m dot by m dot. Okay. So, and the definitions of uh, this comes from p is equal to rho r t rho r t. So, d p by p is uh, d rho by rho plus d t by t and uh, Mach number is defined as v by a and a goes as square root of t that from there d m by m is equal to d v by v minus 1 by 2 d t by t. Uh, then you can use uh, t naught definition is t multiplied by minus 1 by 2 m square and from there you get this equation. Similarly, p naught 
Similarly, the definition of impulse function f is equal to 1 plus gamma m square multiplied by p a okay. and the definition of uh, ent ent uh, entropy. entropy. Okay. So, you get all these different equations. So, all of them can be taken together. So, what are the unknowns pressures, uh, density, temperature, velocity, Mach number, stagnation pressure, impulse function and entropy. And what are the uh, various uh, driving uh, uh, changes that drive these uh, different parameters? They are uh, mass addition, change in area, this k plus l uh, is uh, due to uh, drag forces. So, that is momentum equation, in the momentum equation you have friction, drag and momentum deficit due to um, mass addition. So, that is over here and d t naught by uh, t naught which is change in uh, stagnation temperature uh, and of course, the d a by a is just the change in area. So, each of those equations can be written in a matrix form. For example, d p uh, by p is equal to d rho by rho plus d t by t. Uh, this can be expressed in uh, completely matrix form uh, over here. Okay. So, uh, that can be done if you do the proper uh, multiplications here then you will find that um, equation. Similarly, if you take the first uh, equation which is the uh, mass flow equation which was uh, d rho by rho plus d v by v is equal to d m dot by m dot minus d a by a. This is from the mass conservation equation that we have done over here from this equation and that equation can be found by doing the multiplication of the first row with this column corresponds to the first value over here. So, this uh, complete equation basic matrix equation basically represents the set of all equations that we have considered. Now, this can be uh, inverted. So, the way to solve this is you have to express uh, each parameter d p by p, d rho by rho, d t by t in terms of these driving potentials, these driving uh, uh, potential and uh, a influence coefficient associated with them. This can be solved analytically. Yeah, you can use nowadays there are good uh, uh, analytical solvers like uh, Maple, Mathematica, even in MATLAB it is possible. You can uh, represent uh, d m by m uh, using Kramer's rule, you can represent all these different uh, flow property to a driving potential, which is changes in area uh, due to friction, uh, due to heat processes which is change in uh, uh, stagnation temperature and uh, mass addition. So, if you consider say d m by m how does uh, Mach number change? Uh, it has an influence coefficient associated with it for a driving potential d a by a. Uh, along with that plus uh, an influence coefficient due to frictional forces multiplied by this quantity plus uh, an influence coefficient due to d t naught by t naught multiplied by t naught. So, for every flow parameter we can flow property we can write this uh, influence coefficient for that corresponding driving potential. So, it is possible to do it and therefore, uh, we can write for example, if you consider d m by m. So, for this you can write down the entire uh, uh, solution which is it is 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 okay it is 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square by 1 minus m square and you have the term associated by um, uh, d a by a and you have the term associated with friction you also have term associated with drag and d t naught by t naught and uh, mass addition also. So, this considers all the different uh, properties 
and how is T naught related T naught 2 related to T naught 1 it is related by the energy equation where you can consider heat uh, work done heat added work done by the system and this is uh, uh, the uh, difference between injectant mass total enthalpy and uh, the enthalpy of the main uh, flow. So, uh, if you consider uh, mass flow rate, mass flow rate is nothing but rho A V. If you consider two particular points or it, at a particular point you can relate it to pressure Mach number. This was done in uh, previous classes. From here we can get to P 2 by P 1. And in since there is an injection of mass also available m 2 and m 1 need not be the same that uh, should be understood over here. So, uh, if you can solve for uh, say Mach number and to do that you have to integrate this, this can be integrated using any numerical tool there is no analytical way this can be done. But some qualitative uh, uh, aspects of how uh, we can uh, know what is happening can be understood by just clubbing all of them together into a particular uh, uh, function lambda. Before we go there uh, the way to solve these problems is write down uh, any parameter for example, here we have written it in Mach number d m by m can be written as a function of all the uh, driving potentials and Mach number and we take two points 1 and 2 we should know the initial condition at 1 and it can be integrated to 2 ok. Uh, it can be integrated to 2 you can use any numerical uh, integration algorithm once you know properties at 1 and 2 m 1 and m 2 then all other uh, parameters can be um, done. So, we can club all this together the entire thing can be clubbed together as uh, lambda ok. So, this complete expression is lambda, lambda now has uh, uh, influence of all various uh, parameters. So, um, uh, now if you see that your d m by m is lambda by 1 minus m square ok. So, we can look at uh, what will happen if uh, lambda has different signs similar to what we were looking for say area change or friction or heat addition separately then uh, what will happen uh, to uh, this particular uh, value. So, if you take uh, lambda uh, it can have uh, initially it can have uh, negative sign or it can have positive sign or it can be 0 ok. So, uh, you have this equation um, d m by m is equal to lambda by 1 minus m square. So, depending on the sign of lambda uh, you have various descriptions of um, the flow. So, initially suppose we uh, take that uh, lambda is negative and you consider that lambda is less than 0 and here you have in x direction. So, this is the flow that is varying along x quasi 1 d flow and on y axis it is Mach number. So, if you begin with say a subsonic Mach number that is Mach number is less than 1 and that uh, lambda is uh, negative. So, lambda is negative. Uh, if lambda is negative, so lambda by 1 minus m square uh, m is less than 1. So, this quantity is going to be positive. So, d m by m will be negative that means, Mach number will continue to reduce. So, this is the uh, direction of how the flow would vary with uh, lambda being 0 there is no change in Mach number that is a critical point over here, but if lambda is initially negative a subsonic flow continues to reduce, supersonic flow will continue to increase because this becomes negative and uh, the lambda is negative, negative by negative is positive. Initially if uh, lambda is if lambda is positive then uh, the directions reverse and initially subsonic flow will accelerate you will have increase in uh, Mach number 2.1. Similarly, 
you have a supersonic flow its uh, Mach number will reduce. But what if uh, lambda switches sign in between? So, that can happen lambda can be initially uh, negative it can switch sign at some point become equal to 0 and then uh, uh, the sign can change and can it can become positive. So, if you consider such an effect then initially if uh, a lambda is negative a subsonic flow will decelerate then lambda will become 0 and after that it will accelerate again. Okay. Uh, similarly, a supersonic new flow first will accelerate, uh, it will increase Mach number, lambda will become 0 and then it will uh, decelerate. Uh, so, if it was if it had started from 1, it accelerates, decelerates and comes back to a 1. But if you consider a case where you have initially lambda is positive, then a subsonic flow will accelerate, then it will reach lambda equal to 0 which is a critical point when Mach number is 1 and then further it can increase when lambda switches sign and lambda becomes less than 0. All the cases of variable area ducts must remind you of this kind of an approach. From a initial uh, subsonic case it goes to supersonic flow or from an initial supersonic flow it goes to a uh, subsonic flow. Uh, if you are not achieving the critical point which is lambda equal to 0 at Mach number equal to 1, uh, then you will uh, just increase uh, in a subsonic flow first it will increase then achieve uh, the maximum point then again it will decrease. Similarly, for supersonic flow first it will decrease achieve a minimum point and then increase the Mach number. So, uh, you can see that these uh, different curves for different cases of lambda have the elements of various aspects that we have already discussed separately in different cases whether it be uh, variable area ducts or it be uh, fan of flow or rally flow. When you have combinations of them uh, you have to look at lambda where you have a complete combination. For example, if we consider a case consisting only of friction and area change uh, which can be a flow through a, a nozzle converging divergent uh, passage with uh, friction. Then um, what uh, you will see uh, all other drag and change uh, there is no heat addition or mass addition. Then you have a term here minus d a by a plus gamma m square by 2 4 f d x by d. If there was no friction at all then it is only due to changes in area and we know that the uh, critical point occurs at the minimum area uh, which is at the throat. But if there is friction also added along with that then critical point should occur when lambda is equal to 0. But when lambda is equal to 0 so if you get the minimum point minimum point is d a equal to 0 that is at the throat. But still if you consider friction 4 f dx by d is greater than 0. So, lambda remains greater than 0. So, lambda remains positive. So, uh, a Mach number should be still uh, it should be subsonic. So, lambda equal to 0 uh, achieved at m equal to 1 that is the critical point and uh, this you can you will be able to achieve when uh, d a by a is exactly equal to gamma m square by 2. Uh, 4 f dx by d. Now, this term is greater than 0 that means, d a by a should be greater than 0. That means, the choking when you consider a uh, both area and friction choking will happen in the divergent passage slightly downstream of the uh, throat. Okay. So, uh, this can be uh, this is a result that comes out of considering multiple parameters. Similarly, we can consider heat addition or mass addition. So, uh, the idea here was uh, to introduce the topic of generalized quasi 1D and show that um, you can actually uh, do the generalized solution where different driving potentials can be considered together and uh, we can look at uh, solutions of them. These are useful for doing initial engineering calculations before going on to more 
say CFD kind of approach or an experimental kind of approach. You want to quickly know what will happen when uh, you have both friction, heat addition and area change happening uh, which is typical to say propulsion devices or nozzles or diffusers in real flows. An idea of how they would behave can be understood with the help of this generalized 1D flow and further uh, studies can be carried out later by using uh, CFD approaches or experiments. So, um, with this we come to the close of discussion of quasi 1D kind of uh, approach. It is uh, uh, we have had a very elaborate uh, discussions on this approach and they provide you the basic understanding of gas dynamic flows uh, which is uh, important. But when uh, we are considering more practical problems, we want to know what is happening to the flow field, uh, what are the details of flow structures and so on. For that we have to use the differential equations and one uh, particular way is looking at the first we always look uh, an approach towards the inviscid flow. So, that is what we will be dealing uh, from the next class onwards. In this uh, particular course we will not uh, go into uh, high fidelity models like CFD or and so on, but uh, people have been looking at approximate methods, uh, potential flows and such, uh, such approaches. We will look at them and see what are the important results that come from uh, such an approach in the coming classes. So, there we will be looking at complete flow field instead of such approximation that flow is uniform across a particular cross section. So, with that we end the uh, quasi 1D discussions, thank you.